Hello, and I hope you're ready for the next installment of RLC Three Phase Circuits. This is part three in the introduction to three phase circuits. In this particular video, we're going to be looking at parallel balanced three phase RLC circuits. To start off with, let's do a really quick review of a simple parallel RLC circuit where we'll solve for all the values, all the currents, and all the powers. And we'll figure out what the power factor is along with the angles. If you need more of a refresher than this, I'll put a link at the end of this video to the single phase RLC solution video. So let's get started with this quick review. Here we have a source voltage of 480 volts, single phase, 60 hertz, a resistance of 10 ohms, an inductive reactance of 20 ohms, and a capacitive reactance of 48 ohms. The easiest way to solve this type of problem is to use the currents, because currents add nicely, albeit vectorally, in an RLC parallel circuit. By doing that, we'll solve for IR, IL, and IC which will give us 48 amps at zero degrees, 24 amps at minus 90 degrees, because it's inductive, and 10 amps capacitive, which means it's leading by 90 degrees. When we vector sum these together, there's a difference between the capacitive and the inductive currents by 14 amps. So we add the 48 amps resistive to the 14 amps at plus 90 degrees, and we end up with a result of 50 amps, which will be at a lagging angle of 16.26 degrees. Having our current in hand, we can now find our total circuit impedance by taking the total voltage by the total current, and that'll give us 9.6 ohms at plus 16.26 degrees of an angle. With our currents and voltages in hand, we can solve for each of the powers as well as the total power. Where total power, total apparent power, ST, is ETIT, which is our total voltage by our total current, which gives us 24 kVAs. Our true power in watts will work out to be about 23 kilowatts. Our inductive power will work out to be about 11,520 vars, which leaves us with a capacitive power of 4,800 vars. To double check our total apparent power of 24 kVAs, we should vector sum our individual powers. And sure enough, when we add our total true power to the difference in our reactive powers, we get back to our 24 kVAs. Using our total apparent power and our resistive power, we can now find our power factor, which for this circuit works out to be 96%. Taking the arc cos of our power factor, we find out that we are correct in our calculation of 16.26 degrees for this circuit. So, what do you need to take from this review? Well, when we're in parallel, the easiest thing to do are add up the currents. So, find each individual component current. Vector sum the currents. You can use that to find your total Z or your total apparent power. As with any circuits, powers always add. So you can also find your individual powers and vector sum those. Power factor is always your true power over your apparent power as a representation of your efficiency. So with all of that in mind, let's see how this set of principles applies to a RLC three-phase circuit. So let's take the example we just looked at and see how that applies to a three-phase RLC circuit. So let's take a delta-connected resistance, a delta-connected inductance, and a Y-connected capacitance. We'll end up feeding it with 600 volts, 60 hertz. We'll take a look at how the current breaks up or what happens to the current as it comes in on line A. Obviously this circuit wouldn't work if we didn't have lines B and C, but let's just take those out for a moment while we look at the current coming in on line A. 
our total line current is going to come in here. Now when it gets to the first node, you'll see that the current branches off, where some of it's going to go and feed the delta, and some of it's going to go on to feed the other two. Since the current breaks up, that means that there's a parallel relationship. And that's what's going on here. Our delta resistance is in parallel with our delta inductance, which is in parallel with our Y capacitance. The line current then gets to the second node and some of it will break up and feed the XL delta, and the rest will go on to feed the Y connected capacitance. In order to add the currents, you have to use the line values. You, the line currents are separate from the phase currents and is independent of the shape, as we discussed previously. So when adding currents, make sure you always, always use line values. But just like we did in our RLC parallel circuit, our total line current is a vector sum of our resistive current and the difference between our two reactive currents. We can then use that total line current to find our total impedance should we want it. And just like we did in our RLC parallel single phase, you will use your total reactive current and your total resistive current in order to get the angle of the current. Do not use the ohms. Your total apparent power? Well, that's our good old power formula for three phase, root three E line I line. And again, using your total line current. We could solve for each of our individual powers in both our resistive, inductive, and capacitive parts and vector sum those together vector summing the resistive power along with the difference in the reactive powers. What I've shown here is using three E phase I phase, but I could have easily have used root three E line I line for each of the individual components. Power factor is solved the same way using your total true power divided by your total apparent power. And again, your power factor is equal to the cosine of theta, or if you want to find theta, it's the arc cos of the power factor. So there's striking similarities between the three phase parallel and the single phase parallel. The only thing you have to keep track of is as you're solving for each line current, you have to keep track of the shape, whether it's a delta or a y, and apply the appropriate sorry lost my train of thought so you have to keep track of whether it's a delta or a y and apply the appropriate principles for solving for the line current for either so let's take a look at this example running through the numbers so here's the circuit we were just looking at and as we go about our solution, we'll break it up into three individual parts where we'll solve for the delta connected resistance, the delta connected inductance, and the Y connected capacitance. Now keep in mind, if you're doing a problem with different shapes, you have to keep the principles for those shapes in mind, such as deltas and Ys, because it won't always be a delta connected resistance or a delta connected inductance or a Y connected capacitance. It could be any variation of those. So solving for the delta connected R. Well, we know that deltas, that line and phase voltage are the same. Our resistance is given to us as 10 ohms per phase. So using our phase voltage and our phase resistance, we end up with 60 amps per phase in our resistive circuit. And when it comes to deltas, the line current is bigger than the phase current. So we have to compensate for that. So that our line current works out to be 103.9-ish amps. And since it's resistive, it would be at zero degrees. The current and the voltage would be in phase. 
With our line current in hand, we can then calculate the total resistive power for our resistive circuit. And this works out to be 108 kilowatts. We can now move on to the second part, which is a delta connected inductance. Again, using the same principles as we did earlier, the phase and the line voltage are the same in a delta, which works out that we get 30 amps per phase in our inductive circuit. It being a delta, we have to compensate for the line current, which works out to be about 51.96 amps at a lagging 90 degrees. Again, currents lag in inductive circuits. With our line current in hand, we can now solve for our total inductive power, which works out to be 54 K vars inductive. Going on to our third section, which is our Y connected capacitance. We have a 600 volt line current, but since it's a Y, we have to compensate for the phase voltage. So 600 divided by root three will give us approximately 346.4 volts per phase across each capacitive component. And that works out to be about 17.32 amps per phase in our capacitive circuit. Now, since it's a Y, line currents and phase currents are the same. So in our capacitive circuit, we have 17.32 amps capacitive, which means it leads by 90 degrees. With those values in hand, we can calculate our capacitive reactive power, and that comes out to be about 18 K vars. With all our line currents and all our powers calculated out, we can go on to calculate out our totals. Again, make sure you use your line values because your line values are independent of your phase values. So our total line current will be our total resistive line plus the difference of our reactive lines, which 51.96 take away 17.32 works out to 34.64 amps inductive. And when you add 103.9 amps resistive to 34.64 amps at 90 degrees inductive, you get a vector sum of 109.54 amps at a lagging 18.43 degrees. And again, you could use Pythagorean's theorem if you don't have that operation on your calculator. With our line total line current in hand, we can calculate our total apparent power, which works out to be 113.84 kVAs. Since we already have our total resistive power and now we have our circuit apparent power, we can calculate out our power factor, which works out to be 94.87%. Knowing that the power factor is also the cosine of the angle, we can use the power factor to check and see if our calculated angle is correct. And sure enough, it works out to be 18.43 degrees. When calculating out your angle, you can either use your current triangle or your power triangle to calculate the angle. Bearing that in mind with power, power always adds. So we could calculate our apparent power by taking the vector sum of the true power in watts plus the difference in the reactive powers. The difference in the reactive powers, well, there's 54 K vars inductive and 18 K vars capacitive, which leaves us with a net 36 K vars inductive. Vector summing that at 90 degrees to our 108 kilowatts resistive at zero degrees gets us back to our total apparent power of 113.84 kVAs. It's encouraged that you calculate your power out the two different ways, just as we did way back in single phase, by taking your total voltage and your total current, but again, three phase, root three, E line, I line, to get your total apparent power, 
and then vector summing your powers and seeing that you get the same or close enough with a margin of rounding answer. There are a lot of steps in order to solve a three-phase RLC circuit. Make sure you always keep in mind the principles between deltas and y's. Solve each section separately. Break them up into their own individual pieces, whether it's a resistive or inductive or capacitive branch. Be mindful of the principles of delta and y. Find your line currents. Remember, line currents are independent of the shape. They don't care whether it's a delta or a y. So you need a common ground before you can add them together. And your line current allows this to happen. You can also calculate your individual powers as you go through the problem. Use your line currents to find the total line current. Once you have your line current, find your total apparent power. Compare that to a vector sum of the individual powers and make sure that you are close enough within a margin of rounding. If you need to, you can use the total line current and the total voltage, line voltage, to find the total circuit impedance if you should wish. Use either your current triangle using line currents or your power triangle in order to find the angles. It's always best practice to use line values. Use your powers to finally finish up and find your power factor. Again, compare the arc cos of your power factor to your calculated angle using your currents to make sure that those are complementary to each other. Well, there you have it. Everything builds on everything. And now, hopefully, you should be able to make your way through a parallel RLC three-phase calculation. The next presentation that we'll take a look at, we'll look at unity power factor correction in a balanced three-phase network. Until next time, thanks for watching.